You should be able to see my screen now, everyone. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, uh, so we work as uh, Quest Learning and uh, we operate from two locations right now, from Hyderabad, Miyapur, and from Nairobi. Okay, um, so, okay, yeah, this is our address. Uh, this is our phone number, 8008101590. You can save it. And our aim is to um, um, start a um, advanced technology center, okay? And we don't focus on everything. We focus on advanced concepts like um, data science, cloud computing, um, um, AR, VR, okay, uh, blockchain. These are some of the areas that we work on. And um, I'm the faculty for data science. This is started by uh, Smriti. She is... Um, I am um, um, Lucknow alumni and uh, she has started and she has partnered with multiple faculties like me to take different classes. So I am basically a programmer. I have about 20 years of experience and I started career uh, my career as a Java developer and got into database uh, programming. And then for last few years, I'm into um, data analysis, um, presentations, analysis, and uh, you know um, data science. And I have worked on areas like in healthcare, manufacturing, retail, um, and CPG. Okay, and I have worked on various uh, in various roles. I'm still working, and teaching is my part-time um, passion, which I want to follow. So I do it as part-time. Um, coming to me, I've got I've written a number of books um, on retail, Python programming, SQL, data science. So if you are if you enroll for Python, you will get my Python book. Okay, if you enroll for data science, you get all the other three books as well. Uh, these three books together covers um, almost everything that we we plan to do. Okay, I have written books for Smyrna University, Kerala universities on programming as well. Um, I've also have uh, got about seven patents um, uh, while working in this field. Okay, and so that's about me. Generally, we conduct um, weekday, online, offline, weekend, morning, afternoon, evening. Okay, so we keep ro rotating different batches. We are going to start from today, weekday, afternoon, uh, weekend, sorry, weekend, afternoon batches. Um, the way we work is the first two classes is free. We don't charge for first two classes. And then you have a week to decide and make the payment and enroll for the third class. Okay. And uh, it's going to be live, going to be live, going to be interactive. You can stop me and ask me. We don't have 50, 100 people. We go with 10 to 20. We were expecting about 15 to 20, but that's okay. Um, uh, seven is also a lucky number. We'll get started. No, seven plus two, nine. <laughs> Say nine of us. Okay, so that's about me. Um, coming to uh, Python course, uh, this is about 32 to 35 hours. Depends upon you know how we take if you guys don't ask me questions we can finish off in 30 hours if you ask questions it'll take 35 36 hours so we are not very particular about time okay um, we are focusing on topic and these are the topics that are going to cover okay basic programming then different operators if conditions if else uh, elif uh, you have uh, data sets like strings list tuple dictionary sets then functions module packages object oriented programming okay so one to six, what you see, this is called core Python. Okay, so when you say you know Python, these are the six things that you need to know, minimum. Okay, and then we get into uh, additional topics, uh, file handling, exception, regular expressions, little bit of GUI. Okay, and then we end with database. Okay, so for Python, okay, we'll do maybe just three, four hours of database and we'll finish it off. And for those who want to get into data science course, we extend database. Database itself will be another 20 hours of uh, course, okay, where we will get into details like how to install MySQL, work with MySQL, Postgres, um, perform various um, operations, like we said, uh, crude operation, right? Create, read, update, delete. So we'll see uh, how to perform select, insert, update, delete on, all, on the database. So then, uh, we have other topics as well. We get into statistics. So statistics is the basis for machine learning. Okay, so we focus on statistics. 
um, then we get into visualization where we will also uh, apart from Python, we will do visualization in Python. And apart from that, we'll also use a little bit of Tableau and Power BI. So we'll tell you how to implement or how to perform visualization using Tableau and Power BI. We'll also expose you to our programming, not much, but a little bit uh, exposure to know that those, uh, you know, Python and R are the main programming for machine learning. In fact, R is even simpler than Python for machine learning. But we focus mostly on Python because uh, if you look at terms of applications, Python has much wider application. Okay, you can use it for web development, in networking, and various other stuff. So that's why we focus more on Python. But just to tell you that you know this is how Python works, we will also go a little bit about um, our programming as well. Okay, and then the last part is machine learning. Okay, so we. Uh, so once we are done with status, these are the foundation for machine learning. So Python is like a tool. Our programming is like a tool. Statistics is the foundation, right? Uh, all the algorithms are based on statistics. Then database, because you have to connect to database, you have to work with database. So that's why SQL is also included. And data visualization. So that's the, when you actually work on data science, you know, the, the last part of your work is to present it to your management. That's where visualization comes into picture, you know, Power BI Tableau. And the core of machine learning is the machine learning algorithms. So that's what the eighth topic, which is machine learning algorithms. And this goes on for almost like 80 hours. Okay, so this is not something that you can finish off quickly in a month too. This is something that where you have to, you need to maintain your um, enthusiasm for almost four to six months. Okay, this, this takes time. Okay, so you need to maintain your enthusiasm. And then uh, we also have third module. Uh, for those who want to um, advance, uh, you know, their career in data science. And mostly I recommend this for anybody with more than five years experience. So generally fresher may not get into this. Okay. But for experience, we do recommend that go for deep learning course as well. So this is another like 25 to 30 hours, of course. So we have to cover data science and then get into deep learning. This is like an additional module. Okay. So this is about the course. Any, any question, guys, here about the course? Anything that you wanted to uh, know? Because this is more of a doubt session first day. Okay. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about what the course is, what we are going to do, how we are going to do, um, how to install different software. And um, uh, if we get time today, so then we'll start today or tomorrow, it'll be full uh, hands-on, uh, which I have planned. So any question, guys, on the phone or here in the room? So you are interested in Python, right? So it will be course one. Yes. <laughs> OK. OK. So you guys are good with SQL, right? SQL. OK. You are anyway working. Perfect, perfect. So I think the last module will be very helpful, uh, you know, uh, in the course one, the database. Okay, we'll see how to connect directly to different databases from Oracle, uh, from Python. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay. And um, um, the way it's going to work, okay, is that it will be hands-on. Okay, in the sense, I'm going to do it and show you everything. And uh, when I'm doing it, I want you all to look at the screen, okay? Because what happens when you practice along with me, right? You make some mistake and our mind is like that. When we see a problem, we try to fix the problem. So if you get a problem, you'll start fixing your problem and you'll miss what I'm saying. So every session will be recorded. Recordings will be shared. We'll create one um, a blog page where all the code and the recording will be shared with you. And those will be on YouTube and hidden like, you know, it will be in that uh, mode where people can only private, not private. It's called uh, protected mode or something. Anybody with the link can access. So it is on YouTube. So you'll have access for uh, the rest of your life. And the course content will be given to you. Okay, the book will be given to you. So you have the book and the code that I'm going to do here will also be uploaded on the blog site. So, you know, we'll create one specific blog for us. And I'll keep updating after every session. So you'll have that blog along with the video link and the content. Okay, that's how the course is going to be. Um, I'm going to 
demonstrate concepts using program. Okay. And what I expect is that when you go back, you redo the same stuff. Okay. What I do in the class, you try to redo the same stuff. And generally what I'll do in two hours, probably can do it in 45 minutes. Okay. Or because I'm going to describe, talk about it and then do the course, right? So it's going to be longer. So 45 minutes of practice and another one hour of uh, maybe doing additional. Like I'm going to give you um, uh, assignments as well. And those assignments will be easy to little above average kind of thing. And I don't give, I don't have solution for assignments. I don't give solution for assignment. If you want, if you have a doubt, I want you to try and then give me your code. I'm going to modify your code to help you understand those assignments. Assignments are for you to work on, not for me to work on, right? So you have to make the first attempt. And then if you have any questions, I'm there to help you. Okay. Um, you can, um, uh, you know, you can have your friends uh, involved and you can probably sit together and discuss and do it. It's up to you. And I also uh, will have um, course, uh, one project for every topic. Okay. So for Python, we'll have one topic for, uh, for project work. And uh, uh, that will kind of uh, test all your knowledge in Python. So for those in Python, we'll have one. Those in machine learning, you'll have about uh, eight different projects apart from the program that we'll do in the class. Okay. And those who are, we don't provide uh, placements. We, we, we don't uh, get into that kind of thing. Uh, but if you need any career development kind of help, support, um, uh, you know, floating your resume to different companies, we have a team. Okay. We can do that. We can even do career development programs. We can do interview programs. We have written a lot of uh, content uh, from our side, which is used in industry for uh, different purposes. Like we have content for interview, how to how to give interviews uh, for personal development. Uh, we also do trainings for GRE, GMAT, CAT, right? So we have experts in house and we'll help you if you need any, any of those support. Okay, resume building, all those things we provide. Okay. Any other thing that you wanted to know about the course? This is it. Now we can straight away dive into our uh, main um, uh, thing that why we are here. All good, everyone? Ranjan, Samir, Sumanth, Priya? Yes, sir. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So now let me uh, move to the next thing which I wanted to show. I need to stop presentation and take you to this Chrome page. Okay, uh, let me share my screen again. Okay, you should see my Chrome page. So first, next couple of months, we'll be talking about Python, right? We'll, we'll see what Python is and uh, how to use Python. But before we get into Python, right? What is Python? What do you know about Python? What do you understand? What's your idea about Python? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you mean by coding? When you say coding, what is what is coding? Right. Correct. 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 So uh, see, uh, um, we have machine, right? Machine in the sense, whenever I say machine, it's computer. Okay, it's computer. So when we have this machine computer, I need to talk to it. Now, as you said, right, machine can do faster than us, right? We, we probably can look at 10 rows and machine can probably do thousands of rows in, in seconds. So they are faster, better. They can work 24 by 7. We know all those features. But the problem here is how do we make it work, right? If you can program, if you can convince or you can tell your machine what to do, they can do it. So when you say coding okay, or uh, programming, it is like giving the instructions to machine or to a program. So see, whenever I say machine, please assume it to, a, to be a computer. Okay. 
So we are instructing machine to do that. You know, the basic kind of machine is like bulb, right? You have switch off and switch on. When you switch on, it glows. When you switch off, it goes off. So any machine, any electrical device understands only two things, zeros and one, okay? Zero is power off and one is power on. Any machine, whether it's bulb or it's computer, okay? Or you can have a robot. They all understand just zeros and one. And we we speak our own language, okay? We, we have our natural languages like English, Hindi, and things like that. Now, machine, which understands the zeros and one, okay, and we understand English, there's a communication gap, right? So these programming languages are meant to remove that communication gap. So if, if let's say, if I only speak French, you speak only English, we need somebody in between to translate what we are saying, right? We need a translator. We need an interpreter, okay? We need an interpreter, right? Which will take your English command, translate into my French commands, and my French command will be translated back into English for you. Programming languages, whether it is C, C++, Java, and all those things, they are all interpreter, okay? They they uh, they behave like interpreter. So here we have two concepts. One is interpreter, other is compiler. Interpreter does line by line translation and compiler does entire code translation okay so in the sense let's say if you have to tell me a few things okay and there's a translator in between so there are two ways for the guy to translate one you speak one sentence and this guy will translate you speak second sentence this guy will translate third sentence this guy will translate second option is you finish speaking you know, if you have 10 sentences to tell me, you finish speaking 10 sentences, then this guy will translate all the 10 sentences. Okay? So when we write our commands in English, compiler will wait for you to finish all your 10 lines, 20 lines, 100 lines, 500 lines, 1,000 lines of code. And then it will translate those 1,000 lines at one go. Okay? Interpreter, they do line-by-line -line translation. So your Python programming, R programming, SQL, these are all interpreter they work line by line but when you go to procedures stored procedures okay c plus plus java they're all compiler based programming languages okay there the compiler will take the entire code and translate into machine level so here you have commands in english and then you have computer which understands zeros and one in between the software product whatever we use whether it is java or C or, or Python, they take our English command, translates it into machine level, that is zeros and one. Ultimately, it has to be translated into zeros and one for machine. And then when machine gives the output, it is translated back into our English command. Okay, so that we can see what is the output. So your programming languages does that role, connects human in English commands to machine level command. Now, we have been developing these programming languages over the years. This is not that, you know, suddenly we developed Python. Olden days, 50 years back when computers were developed, they were using what is called as um, a punch cards for uh, for interaction with, with computer. Okay. Okay. So well, what happened in punch card was like, punch card would have holes and like hold, no hold. So they used to pass the light on it. So if there is a hole, the light will go through it. That means it is one. And if there is uh, no hole, right, lights won't pass it. It will be read as zeros. So we were giving com commands in zeros and one. So it's like this. If there's no translator, okay, and I have to speak to you, and I said you speak English, I speak only French, and there's no translator, then what I have to do, I have to learn English and speak to you because it's my work. My I have to talk to you, my work. So I have to learn English and talk to you, isn't it? So we call those programming languages as low-level languages. In low-level languages, as a programmer, you had to learn zeros and one and then communicate with machine and instruct zeros and one. But of course, learning zeros and one is difficult, right? So then they started developing more languages. Assembly language was one of those low-level languages. Then they developed more programming languages, which was a mix of both command instructions and English. Like add three, again, you have to convert into binary format, zeros and one format. 
then they started developing with pascal c c++ all the, these are called as high level language high level language means they are they have english command okay we don't have to know about zeros and ones so we, it has come closer towards human level language and you know my view is python is higher higher level language that means if you compare your uh, python code to say c c++ java code there is a huge difference huge difference what you can do in 50 lines in java you can do probably in 20 lines in python it's it's so simple okay the commands are so simple and that's why python has become popular okay um yes samir only google is visible i'm still talking okay yeah so now you understand what is programming language right programming languages okay is a software sir, are you sharing anything or just google is visible to me sir No, no. Listen to, me, no. Listen, to me, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me, Samir. Okay. Can okay. you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you, sir. Yeah, perfect. Now, what is hardware and software? Hardware is something that you see: CPU, monitor, keyboard, mouse, printer. These are hardware because you can see and feel. Software is something which is you cannot see. Okay, which makes this hardware work. Okay, it's like this. You know, your body is like your hardware. and your what do you call it, the life that runs your body is your software so when you switch off your laptop there is no uh, work that laptop is doing right so like your body laptop is like dead there is no software working its hardware is there but software is not when you switch it on the first software that boots up is called firmware firmware are your hardware based software okay that comes with hardware so every hardware will have some software you talk about printer printer also has a software which you need to install so only that software understand how printer works okay so that's called firmware so we have uh, you know we have motherboard we have um, cpus so they all have firmware and when you pass electricity give power to it those gets activated and they launch what is called as operating system so operating system is main software that will make your laptop work now beauty of this uh, software operating system is okay is that it is like a layer between our us and computer every hardware has a firmware okay so every hardware will behave differently but os is written such a way that it can handle multiple firmwares so we don't need to know i don't need to know what version of cpu i'm using or what version of hard disk i'm using os will manage it os is a layer between your hardware and what we do on top of it so os without os your system will not work any software any hardware you talk about you need operating system operating system is a layer it's that will make your hardware work okay so when i talk about i am a i am a software developer then you ask them are you developing firmware you are developing operating system or you are developing applications program okay most 90% 80% people they work on application development okay so you have operating system which kind of creates a layer between hardware and you and applications or now i need to use op, uh, windows uh, or let's say windows is operating system i need to use microsoft office so office is an application which sits on your os okay i need to use google chrome so chrome is an application which sits on operating system same thing with your mobile phone right if you have android phone android is the operating system ios is an operating system without operating system your mobile will not boot you need android to boot now on top of that you can install multiple apps right what we call apps is application basically and your oper- your office um um chrome these are all applications so now you're using python okay in our training in our learning we are will going to develop applications okay we are not going to develop firmware we are not going to develop operating system we are going to develop applications which will interact with os and then through os it will interact with other other like if you want to connect to database through operating system it has to connect to oracle database or mysql database okay so we are going to develop application software so you have application system application software system software system software is like your firmware which interacts with hardware and then you have operating system 
Okay. So those are the software and to develop application software, we need to connect to computer and we need to understand uh, and give instructions to them. Okay. So as I said, Python is one of the high level programming language uh, through which we will interact with computer. So this is about Python. Now to work with Python, you need to install Python, right? You need to install Python. Um, now again, um, you know, you don't have to install Python. Okay. So I'm going to tell you first to how to create a setup on your machine. Okay. But you don't have to have setup on your machine. Uh, Google has something called as Google Collab. Okay. So if I'm going to show you, this is called, or in Google, just type Collab, C-O-L-A-B. Okay. And if you click on Google Collab, you will see here it says research.google.com. Okay. So this is the product of Google called Collab. And it will open a collab.researchgoogle.com. Now, it needs your login ID password. Okay. You need to give your Google login ID password because my password is already saved. It did not ask for me. And here I have to say new notebook. When I say new notebook, it's going to open notebook for us. Okay. Notebook is where we will do our Python program. So this is where let's say your laptop is old. Uh, you have only no, you have only tablet. You don't, you don't have a laptop or desktop. Then use Google Collab. You can directly use your program here. And the files are directly saved in your Google Drive. Okay, files will get saved also in Google Drive. So you don't have to worry about saving the file. So it opens Google Notebook. And this is the file name, Untitled 12. I can rename it to, say, Prog 22 July 23. Okay, so I've given it a name, Prog 22 July 23. Do not give spaces. Okay. It's going to create problem uh, later. So your file name should not have space. Do, try not to give spaces, but you can use anything here. So this is my file name. And this is where I'm going to write my program. Okay. So this is, I told you, right, this is used when you don't have to install any software. And I'm going to write my first Python program here. Five plus three. Okay. So I said five plus three. And now I'm going to hit on this play button. When you hit on this play button, what happened? Okay, so first time, see, um, it's a it's a product by Google, right? So, and it is hosted in Google's lab, okay? That's why you don't have to install anything. And when you hit on play, okay, um, it has given us it. So first time when you use it, after logging in, it will take some time. But second time onward, again, if I hit it again, it will be very fast, okay? It will not take so much of time. So this is a place where you write your program and your output will be shown here, okay? This is called Google Collab, okay? I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to say print, okay, five plus three, and also print five plus three, okay? Now you see this. I have used print five plus three and I have not used any quotation, right? Now print is our first command that we're going to learn. Print in uh, Python is called as function, okay? Print is called function. What does function mean? Function means that it has a predefined meaning. When I say switch off phone or switch off laptop, I don't have to explain you, right? You know what it means because you, you know, we all understand what is the meaning of switch off laptop. So print is like that, okay? Python already knows what print means. Now, how can Python know? Python is machine. So developers of Python who has developed the Python, right? They have created a function called print and it has already defined the meaning of print for Python. So this is called as inbuilt function. Inbuilt function means when you download and install Python or when you start using Python, that function is already created. Okay. In our work, we will learn to create our own functions. Okay. Just like if they have print, we can create our own function. And that is called as a user defined function. So you have inbuilt function and you have user defined function. 
user defined functions are the function that we will create ourselves okay inbuilt functions are functions which are developed by or written by developers of python which comes with pre installed okay so when you install it it's already available we don't have to do it okay so print is the function now every function okay has to start with simple bracket open and close so if you see here print it has bracket open and bracket close so whatever you have to do with function has to be within these two bracket doesn't matter whether it is inbuilt function or our own function when we define our own function and when we use our own function even then we have to use bracket open and close so if i tell you print function okay okay um, you have to say print here this is how this is how print is completed now within this what you do is your logic now what i have done here i have said print 5 plus 3 now when i run it okay you say here 8 okay now what happened okay let me delete it not to get confused with it so our first line is print bracket open and close 5 plus 3 okay and when i run it it gave us 8 when i said 5 plus 3 it gave us 8 okay it means that when you give something in bracket within the bracket it prints onto the screen so the functionality of print function is to print it onto the screen something that we can see if you want something to be shown onto the screen we have to use print print shows onto the screen but how does it work you said 5 plus 3 now 5 plus 3 is okay the print is evaluating and giving you the output 8 here you see the first line and this is the first output now in second line when you say 5 plus 3 in quotation it is printed 5 plus 3 as it is it has not evaluated okay so understand this print is a function that is used to print your content onto the screen point one point two when you do not give in quotation so i have used double quotation here right when you do not give in quotation it will evaluate it's like i'm telling python please give me the answer for this it's like asking you what is five plus three if i ask you what is five plus three you will say eight isn't it so i'm asking python print five plus three so python is saying okay printing eight now here it's like saying repeat after me five plus three repeat after me five plus three you will not tell me eight you will say five plus three so python is printing you five plus three okay so print will have the things which is without quotation and with quotation okay without quotation means you are asking it to evaluate and give you the value with quotation you are seeing it to not evaluate but give you the value as it is okay so print 5 plus 3 without quotation is evaluating print with quotation is like giving you the outcome make sense one second somebody is asking the link for joining just give me a second so this will happen today and tomorrow okay and um, it shouldn't happen from next week when we know exactly who all are there so okay okay so so we have learned two things here right we have learned how to okay we will we have learned two things here we have learned print okay function which is inbuilt function and how to pass values to the print okay and this is how uh, let's say if you do not pass anything see the line number three i did not pass anything when i did not pass anything it did not print anything 
It doesn't print anything means it printed a blank line. Okay. So print will print a blank line. So if you want a blank and nothing, you give nothing and it printed nothing here. You see, if you want to see the output, if I delete it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to see, see when I said, see, you see the line is missing here. Right. So if I say print and keep looking at it, okay, that gap between five plus three and this last line has increased, isn't it? Because it printed a blank because I did not give anything to this print. Okay. So this is how your um, uh, collab will look like. And you can do your program here. So this is for those who do not want to install any software, directly want to start programming from day one. But if you want to have setup on your machine, okay, there are a few extra things that you have to do, few additional things that you have to do. First thing that you need to do is go to python.org. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So um, you can have single, double, triple, single, triple, double. All do not have. So as of now, yes. In Python, single and double means exactly same. Okay. When I say, uh, you know, hello, let's say. So question is, okay, is it single or double? So answer here is in Python, there is no difference between single and double. So if I say 5 plus 3, it will print 5 plus 3. If I say hello in single quote also, it will print hello. Okay. Absolutely no difference between single and double. But whatever you start with, same thing you have to end with. If you start with double quote, you have to end with double. If you start with single, you have to end with single. Okay. You cannot say I'll start with double and end with single. No. So you have, you can use single or double up to you. But whatever you start with, same thing you have to end with. Okay. And we'll learn more about this when we go to string, which probably will be after a couple of classes. But for now, there's no difference between single and double. Okay. Okay. Now, this website, you have to remember, this is called python.org, official website for Python. Okay. If you don't remember org, you can do Google, Python, and any browser will open this python.org only. Everything that you will need is available on this website. I need to install Oracle software. Okay, the Oracle software need to install, right? So you can go to downloads, click on all release. By default, it is showing you the Windows version here, 5.11.4. Okay, you can go to Windows and you can see more versions. You have, if you are using Windows machine, you can download Windows one. If you go to Mac, you can use Mac. If you are using other platform, you can use other platform. Okay, so if you are using Windows, you can directly click here and install python.exe or you go to Windows and it'll give you all the options and then you can download the version. So this is Python 3.12, 3.10.12. This is 3.11.4. Okay. Whichever version you want to use, you can use. I'll tell you when we talk about installation of software, but okay, Python is another beauty. You can have multiple versions of Python on your machine. Very rarely you can have two applications uh, of different version. But Python, you can have multiple version because Python does not work at global level. That means at your computer level. It works at local level. So when you install Python, it creates a virtual environment in the folder where you install it. Okay. So the effect or the, um, the impact of Python is only in that folder, everything within that folder. Outside that folder will not be able to use Python. Okay. And because of this, what happens is now let's say if you're working on multiple projects, you're working on three different projects and all three different projects uses three different versions of Python. Okay. So you don't have, to, so, you know, it happens, right? You work on multiple projects in your company and all three uses different versions of Python. You can install all three different versions on your Python of your machine, on your machine without any problem. If you're working on a project A, you can use 3.7. Project B, 3.9. Project C, 3.11. 
you can switch your version of Python as and when you work on that specific program or specific application. So that is also, you know, uh, possible. And we'll talk about it in some time today itself in some time. So I told you how to download Python, right? Go and click. Okay. You can in click on it. It will, it will download .exe version. If you want to see the source code, Python is open source, uh, open source application. That's why it is free. There is absolutely no charge for downloading Python. You can actually even see the code of Python. You want to see, you know, what, what is the code source code you can see. So Python source code is available in three different versions. Okay. S original Python was written in C language. Python programming language was written in C language initially. Now you have a Java version also and .NET version also, C sharp version also. So C sharp, Java and uh, C. So there are three different languages in which Python is written. And you can actually download and see this uh, code here. You want to see the code of Python 3.10.5? You can download and you can see the code. Okay. So this is to explore source code. Okay. And this is to download it. So download, you can download the source code or the release version. Release version is the EXE version, which we need to install for working for, working with Python. So you need to download and install. Um, Okay, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to show you how it is done on machine because I already have multiple versions of Python installed, but I can tell you the steps how it is done. Okay. So if you go, yes, yes, of course. Yes, correct. So they keep up, so there are people working. You see, it's an open source, right? Open source means everybody, you and I can contribute it, contribute to Python. So there are many people working and they're adding new features every day. Okay, so every six months, what they do is they take new feature and update. So it started with Python 1 first and they added some features. When you add a lot of features, okay, um, there's no fixed meaning of lot, but lot of features become Python 2. When you again add lot of features, it became Python 3. Okay. And then you have Python 3.0, 3.1. If you add small features, it becomes 3.1. If you add, again add few features, it becomes 3.2. Again, if you add small features, it becomes 3.3. So we call them as release, release version. Python 1, 2, 3 is called release version. This works with any software. Then you have major version, 3.8, 3.9, 3.10. This is called major version. Then you have minor version. You saw 3.10.5, 3.11.2, 11.4. These are called minor version. Release version, major version, minor version. Release version is when you add a lot of features. It becomes a release version. You change it. You know, it's, it's like um, uh, sometimes we say, right? Okay, if somebody changes the look, it's a new version. That means completely changed. So you add a lot of features becomes, if there's a lot of features that gets added to Python, it becomes Python 4. So Python 4 will be a lot more different than Python 3 that we are using. But if you add two new features, two, three new features, it becomes major version change. Minor version is when you are, there's some error, you corrected some error. So you have your work, is not like if you talk about 3.4 and 3.5, there will be some change. But if you talk about 3.4.5 and 3.4.6, 4.5 and 4.6, there will be some correction that you have done. You have not done enough. You have not added enough to it. Okay. So again, let me go back and I'll show you this. Exactly. Possible. It is possible. Now, if you do a program in 3.10, it will definitely not work in Python 2. And if you've done a program in Python 2, it will not work Python 3. Okay. I don't want to get into too, too much of detail, but you know, when Python was around 2.4 and 5, they decided to bring a lot of changes. 
they said, okay, let's bring Python 3. There's a lot of changes we're doing. So we should call it Python 3. So Python 2.4 and 3.4 came together at the same time. So they had same feature, but the way you use it is a lot different. So Python 2 will definitely not work on Python 3. Python 3 will not work in Python 2. One simple example is, in when you're doing Python 2, you don't give the bracket. Print. Yeah, I've said print, right? You simply say print hello or print 3.5. Print space 3.5 or 3 plus 5. You don't give bracket. But in Python 3, you give bracket. So if I write a Python 3 program, I have to say print bracket. And if I run on Python 2, it will throw error because it's not able to recognize uh, you know, print with bracket. Similarly, Python 2 program will, will have print space value. And if you run it on Python 3, it will say uh, bracket missing. So it will not work. Okay. Um, very rarely what happens is, okay, um, they, they don't make that changes frequently. Okay. Or even if they make changes, they give you warning. In a sense, um, we, we, we call that, we call it as um, depre deprecative warning. So let's say I'm using print now. Next version, they decide to remove print. They see that, okay, print we will not use. Instead, we will use put. Okay, we will rename it to put. Not We will not use print. Now, imagine you have written a big application. Okay, you have, you have spent five years, 10 years writing an application, thousands of lines of code, and suddenly Python says, no, we will not use print. So Python, what we'll do is, in the next version, it will have put, and it will also support print. And whenever you are pr using print, it will give you a message that deprecative warning. In next version, print will be removed. And it will be replaced with put. So it's giving you a one. So you have both new one also and old one also. And old one, it gives you a warning. Okay, so that when you... So either you don't upgrade your Python. That's why I said, when I said three different uh, applications, three different versions... You don't upgrade because some things may not work there. You have written 1,000, 10,000. You have put 10 years of your life on writing that program. You can't change it in six months, right? So you continue to use old version. So it happens, you know, if you look at your old application company, they might still be using 3.8, 3.7 only. They will not move. Every new version, they don't move. They might decide, okay, now it's time for us to move to 3.11. So from 3.7, they'll directly move to 3.11. And there will be a lot of changes. They will run the code on 3.11, look at the errors, fix it, and then they move to 3.11. So yes, it will not work. Uh, I mean, chances of it working is less. Okay, And then you have to fix it. You have to repair it. That's why when you download it, right? When you go and download okay, Windows, you don't only have the, you, I mean, you not only have the latest version, you also have the, all the other older versions also. Because if your program is very old, you can download the old version and still work, right? You can even download version 3.4 here. See, 3.5, 2.7, 2.3. You can still download 2.7 and work. Yes, it is not necessary to upgrade. But what happens on the major version, people generally stop supporting new features. So if you look at 2.7 was the last one, okay? So if you are using Python 2, you will not get the features of 3.5, 3.4. They added new features. You will not have access to it. If you need access to new features, you have to upgrade to old higher version. But if you upgrade to higher version, things will break. Yes. So Python 2 gave warning almost seven, six, seven years back. In 2003, they said from 2010, we are not going to support Python 2. So you have six years to move to Python 3. So, you know, that's how they work. See, every software has to come to what is called as end of life. Okay. You start Windows, uh, I don't know, 98. Now, nobody uses Windows 98. If you have a CD, you can still install and use it. But what happens if you install Chrome, new version of Chrome doesn't, doesn't work on 98. So you are forced to move to newer version. Okay. Because... As a developer, you can't support all the versions, right? So you can you can support two old versions or three old versions. You can't support what was 30 years old. 
So even if you have 98 now, you cannot use because other applications does not use 98. You have to move to at least Windows 7. Now, most applications are not even talking about Windows 7. They're talking about Windows 8. Anything older than Windows 7 will not work because Microsoft has also given up the upgrade and things like that. Okay. So I just said, yes. Okay. So it's up to you which version you want to use, but then you won't get the benefit of using newer version. But if you are talking about newer version, some of the things may not work. Okay. So you need to fix it. It will not change suddenly. All of a sudden, it will not change, but it will tell you, give you warning, and then you can decide to change. Yes. Exactly. 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 Okay. That's why because now let's say already your application is on the on the cloud and you know uh, your client is using. Now you need to change it, right? So you let it be running and again you can install any version uh, on the cloud. You can install 2.7 also. So application is running on 2.7. You keep modifying when you're happy, when you're ready to launch in 3.10 then you replace that with the newer version. So, yes. Code, exactly. So it, it depends upon like how much code you have. If you have thousands of lines, then you can't do it overnight. You need years again to do that. But if it is few lines of code, it's easy to do that. Okay. Okay, so this is how you to download it. Now I'm going to show you how to install Python. Okay. Th this is the step of installing Python. Okay. Um, because I, okay, there's a video here. You can watch this video. One thing I wanted to show you here is when you download and double click, it's like installing any software. Okay. Installing Python is like installing any software. When you install any software, what do you do? You download and double click on it. Correct. You don't click on it. This is how your first screen will look like. You see, download the latest version of Windows. Python 3.9 was when I used it. Now it is 3.11. And then, okay, when you don't click on it, this is the first screen that you will get. Okay. You're downloading it. Okay. Once you download it, okay, now you see this. This is your first version. Okay, first screen, sorry. Okay, and when you go to this first screen, okay, you will get two options at the bottom, which your version you are using. Okay, you see these two options here? Install launcher for all users and add Python to path. Okay, so, okay, you can click, so, Recommended is you say all users and also add to the path here. If you add to the path, then in future, we will not have any problem. Okay. So what happens is there is something called as environmental variables. Okay. In windows and all this, how does Python know that you have a, you have installed a software. When you install a software, that variable goes to the environment variable and it is saved there. If you do that, if you say add Python 3.9 to path, the Python path where you're installing Python will go and get added to the environment variable. So when you say Python from anywhere, it will launch the Python. I told you, right, Python has a virtual directory. Okay, when you install it, it is only limited to that. So if I call Python from somewhere else, Python will not be called. So instead what we do is we add this path to the environment variable. If you don't check this box, okay, it can still work, but some things may fail. And then we every time we have to manually add the path. So better is that you check this box, add path to path 3.9 to path or 3.11 to path. Okay, this is recommended. So in future, you will not have any problem connecting to any other application or software because 3.9 path will be there. Now let's say you install 3.9, and then install 3.10. Again, you say add path. So 3.9 path is there and 3.10 path got added. Python will, uh, Windows will always look at the latest path. So even if you have two Python installed and a path added to the environment variable, the latest 3.10 will be taken when you say Python. So in that folder, 3.9 folder, 3.9 will work. 
in 3.10 3.10 will also work but if you call from somewhere else python which one will be called the one whose path is in the environment variable so it is recommended that you check this box okay this is the only thing i that's why i wanted to show you otherwise everything is just next 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 okay say so install now customize because if you already have a version of python it will say customize let's say i already have python 3.8 so it will tell me to customize but if you say no but if you if you want to install the new version click on install now if you click on install now it will launch the installation okay so download the python version okay 3.11 double click on it and then first screen select add python to path that's the only thing i wanted to say and then you click on next 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 it will get installed okay so yeah this is how python will get installed now to check whether python has been installed successfully or not how do you know the python has been installed successfully so for that i need to uh, share my entire screen okay and you see here in type i will say python when i say python see here python 3.10 will be shown okay you can select from here or you know you can go to programs uh, here you go to programs and then you go to p py py python python here see python 3.10 and you expand it so these are the files you will see you will see docs and manuals these are the documentation okay if you want to learn more about python you should i'm going to uh, i'm going to talk about documents you know every time when we learn about something new i'll show you how to use documents okay so uh, you know documents is where python is a very well documented language in the sense you know, it talks about everything is very well documented if all things are available here so that's why we say very well documented language and everything that we want is available here and i'll show you later how to find it as well so this is python 3.10 exe and this is called idle okay uh, development uh, language uh, um, uh, development uh, it's like integrated development and learning environment okay i'll tell you what it means but before that this is the key this is must other three things if you don't have also fine but this has to be there okay this is your what you call as interpreter right the software that will translate your code to machine level and translate the output from machine to your language english language is this this uh, you know python 3.10 if you click on it you will see this triple angular bracket greater than right greater than sign three times okay when you see this that means your installation is successful okay and you can do your python program here itself 3 plus 5 you hit enter see 8 you can say print 4 plus 6 bracket close print print okay hello quotation close hit enter right so same thing what we did in collab you can do it here and you can see the output okay so python is important and you can do the program here now see here it did not wait for me to enter second line the moment i hit enter it gave me the output interpreter i told you line by line it does not wait for me to enter next line okay you asked you gave me one line i will translate it for you so it translated for us this is called interpreter and that's why it is translating for us one second yes there's am back okay so this is called python interpreter where you see triple angular bracket okay and this is where we do or we write our program okay so any questions so far so we have seen how to do program on collab and we have seen how to install python and use python prompt python shell python prompt whatever you call it okay and you can do programming here okay any question guys
all good yes yes mm -hmm. right yes See, uh, question here is the uh, difference between interpreter and compiler. See, it's, it depends upon the developer. Okay, We can get into discussion about advantages and disadvantages. Both have advantages and disadvantages. Okay, But the developers of Python choose it to be an interpreter. Okay, Generally, interpreter is supposed to be faster than compiler in execution. Okay, And because of which there are some, um, some you know, some advantages also, okay, uh, which we will see later, and um, and I will compare with Java and C C plus plus. Like one example, since you have asked, one example is, um, in C C plus plus, okay, if you define something as number, okay, that will remain number throughout the program. You can't change it, okay. But in uh, Python, you can keep change. You can change number to uh, um, number to text, text to number. We call it as variables. Okay, so I'll talk about it when we talk about variables again. Okay, yeah. Did you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, next question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All these are application. Firmware is where you deal with hardware. Okay, so your aim is to make a hardware, and that hardware needs to have software. You are building a printer. Okay, you are making a printer. Printer has to have its own software. That's how you connect to your. When you connect the cable to print uh, laptop, it gets activated, right? So, so those are hardware. So, hard people who make hardware, like you're making uh, router, making a TV, right? So they need to work on firmware. If you are making a pure software, then it's application only. There is no firmware there. Okay. Yeah. Next. That's all. Okay, any, any question guys on, on uh, online? No? Any question guys? No? Online? Okay. If there are no question, we'll continue. So this is how you install Python prompt and can do your program here. But if you see, this is not very convenient to do program here. Okay. Uh, if you if you remember Collab, Collab, uh, you know, was easier to do programming than this. If you go to Collab, uh, let's say if I say P R I, okay. Okay, so it is even suggesting me what should come, right? So this is called intelligent editor. Okay, that means um, these these are like text editor, okay, with additional features capabilities. Okay, which is not provided to 
this python here people who are developing this is more focused on how to add more features they are not focusing on uh, you know the usability perspective so there are other companies they create what we call as ides integrated development environment so when you say ideally there ideally is an ide which is developed by the developers of python okay you can think of it as advanced notepad okay those are like advanced notepad where you can write your program and run it okay running is done through python.exe only the shell which i showed you running has to happen through that but to type you can use editor okay like notepad editor or you can even use a notepad editor to write your program so what we generally do is to make our life easier and making this programming thing faster we we download another software called ide okay and there are a lot of ides there are like collab we have seen online okay you have pycharm which is studio code you have jupiter note you have anaconda right so uh, you can install any one any one and you can work with it okay my personal favorite is pycharm and um, vs code okay i like editors not notebooks now here again if you are already using any editor okay or let's say your company is uh, already subscribed or using any editor you prefer to use that one okay but if you are not using okay you can follow what i am doing i am using pycharm so you can use pycharm okay but as i said if you are already using you are you are confident with uh, you know you are com you know using a particular ide you continue to use that don't you don't have to change it okay so uh, i mean if you talk about here i have it i'll share this link also if you talk about ides uh, advanced ides you will see here you have like pycharm spider eclipse it's vs uh, visual studio vs studio code atom and etc right but i would suggest you to use pycharm okay pycharm is a editor which is um, recommended by or which is developed by um, jet brains and it is recommended by most of the people so you go to google and say pycharm download and you click on community edition so pycharm has two version enterprise and community enterprise edition is paid one okay you have to pay money community is free so people who are using it to learn practice they say you use my community version the people who are working to make money right so they say okay if you are making money you give me also some right so you go and type community pycharm community edition download and you click on this pycharm download option and here you will see professional which is in blue button and here just below that you will see community edition so this is the paid one you get 30 days trial after 30 days it will stop working you will have to pay money so don't download this okay download the community one okay click on download and install like any software very simple to install okay so download this community edition this is totally free and install it now when you install pycharm and if you have added the uh, python path python to the path add python to path right if you have already done it and then you install pycharm pycharm it will be able to connect to python through the path so that's what i said if you have checked the box then there is nothing that extra you have to do pycharm knows where your python is it doesn't have to ask you but if you are installing pycharm first and then python if you change the order pycharm first and pycharm will not able to find path if you install python but you have not added to the path pycharm will not be able to know where python is then extra step you have to do is manually you have to connect pycharm to your python okay so how does it work okay you download and double click on it like any software okay again as i said you know i already have it so i'm not going to do it and show you but it is like doing any software okay it's not something different or unique and then you go okay and um, um, you go to where pycharm 
okay when you you will see here pycharm community edition okay and probably 2023.1 this is the latest one and you click on this when you click on this for you okay something like this will be opened and don't worry about the color okay by default pycharm uh, community is black in color and enterprise is blue in color but you can always change the color and font everything okay so because i've already made it white when you download and install it it will look black but that's okay don't worry content is exactly same so when you launch your pycharm for the first time it will create a, a screen like this and it will ask you where do you want to create your python project python project is nothing but it's like a folder where all your files will be there it's like a folder where all your files will be saved so you say you know you can give your location okay i have given this location you can give your own location so this is first thing creating a folder where all your files will be there in future and this is where we say you want to create a new virtual environment or use existing environment it's better you create a new environment for that pycharm project so one you have python project uh, python which was installed uh, uh, from using python and this is environment only for pycharm now what is the significance of environment virtual environment so it's like this when you go to office okay one thing is that you don't have a desk to sit you go and sit anywhere versus you have your own desk okay why do you have your own desk why is that better see there is advantage of both okay advantage of first thing is that you reach office early and you pick the best looking seat and you sit there right but the problem is okay you can't have your own personal space there right let's say some people like to decorate their cubicle and put something there right you can't do that right but if you have a dedicated space then you can do that so virtual environment is like creating a dedicated space it so in theory it is not more than saying that this is my folder where my files will be there this is my folder where all my files will be there so it is just like creating your own cubicle that's it then other advantage is that let's say um every so what is recommended is every project should have its own virtual environment okay why because later you will you will have to install few other things now if you have a one virtual environment and you are doing 10 projects 10 projects need 10 different things so you have 100 things installed in one folder see python if you see we, okay um, python and as we go along i wanted to talk about it is why python is popular today it's free and but more importantly you can do almost anything in python anything and everything is possible whether i said web net web designing or networking or data science everything is possible when you download it it's about 200 or 3 250 mb of file how can 250 of mb of file can do everything so what happens your 250 mb of python is the core python it is not capable of doing everything we have what is called a libraries okay and there are thousands of libraries depending upon what you need to do you need to install the library so when you install your python on day 1 it might look just 300 mb file but if you work it work on it for one year it might become 1 gb of file why because you are pulling different packages and that packages are getting installed so it's like it's like um um i'm thinking of an example let's say you go and you buy um, car without features you go just buy four wheels okay why because i don't like ready made shape of the car i want to make my own shape so you go you buy four wheels then you go and buy uh, you know headlight whichever design and shape you like right you keep going keep making keep getting and then you build your own car okay so so you know bad example but just just trying i'm making i'm trying you to visualize what's happening 
So Python, if everything gets added, your Python is going to be a, a you know, 10 GB uh, uh, file. And anyway, you're not going to use all of them. What's the point of using 10 GB of file? So download this basic Python and then keep installing. So what happens when you create a virtual environment, whatever you're installing will be stored in that virtual environment. Okay, whatever you're downloading, it will be stored in that virtual environment. And when you keep in that virtual environment, okay, tomorrow or let's say later when you want to move from one system to another, or you want to create an executable, which will be used later, you know what exactly you have. Now, for example, if all of us have a common space, if all of us start putting our things there, if tomorrow if you are moving to somewhere else, you will not know which is mine, which is yours. Instead, if you keep everything separate, tomorrow if you have to move, you just take your bag and move ahead. You will not have to ask whose box is this, whose pencil is this, whose pen is this, because whatever is there is all yours. So whatever is so here, your means applications. So in a in a virtual environment, whatever you are doing is all yours. And tomorrow when you deploy, because see, when you deploy something to cloud or when you make an executable, when you deploy something or you make an executable, okay, so you know exactly what all things to pull from your system and put it on cloud. If you have 10 different applications connected to one folder and 10 using 10 different things, you have 100 um, libraries which you have installed. And now if I move to cloud, I don't know which of those 100 are, 100 should I move. If you move all the 100, it's fine. Okay, you can have more than what is required. But imagine that you're occupying so much of space on cloud. And cloud, every space and for every bandwidth, you are paying money, right? So you want to keep it as minimum as possible, as less, as small as possible. So virtual environment is like creating a specific folder for that particular application only. So it's recommended that whenever you are doing a real project, every project should have a different virtual environment. So it's like this. Oh, I need to know what all things this project uses. Go to the virtual environment, you will be able to get it. So when you talk about deployment, probably we can talk more about it. But keep in mind that it's always a good practice to have virtual environment, okay, environment which is limited to limited to particular application. Okay, it's like having a different house for each application. So anything related to that application, you go to the house, you'll find it. Then keeping one house and making it a place for all the 10 applications. So always you say new environment. And then here you give the path. You see base interpreter. So which interpreter you want. So it will pick automatically from path. Right? It will pick automatically from the path. Okay, so so when you are uh, launching your PyCharm for the first time, you will get a screen like this where you need to create the project and add a project name, choose the interpreter which will be automatically added to you. But if it is not there, you can click on this triple dot and search where your Python is installed. And then link that path and then it will work. And then you say create. I'm not going to click on create, but you need to create create when you're using PyCharm for the first time. And when you create Python for the first time, okay, and you say create, it will create a, this is, you see, all these files I added later, okay, so ignore all these files, you know, you'll have something like this, your, your project and nothing else here, complete blank, okay, and then you go and create your first file, first Python file, okay, how to create your first Python file, you go to file, and you go to new. When you click on new, you will see Python file here. So if if it is perfectly 
um, if your PyCharm has perfectly found the Python there, previous I showed you, right? The Python file, then you will see Python here. If you do not see Python here, then something is wrong. You might have to restart and see again, or you need to link your interpreter again. Okay. If you have linked it, still you don't see it, just restart. Or you wait for two, three minutes or five minutes. Sometimes it might take a few minutes to link your PyCharm and Python. But key is that you will see Python file here. Click. Ha. Huh. Correct. You can you can check it. Yeah. See, create association means let's say if you already have Python file on your machine, it will link those to the yeah. Existing, yes, ex exactly. So let's say you know if you are uh, if you are already using it, then you know it will link those existing project also. Let's say you installed it, uninstalled it for some reason. Now again, you have installed it, so the old projects will automatically be linked. Okay. Any questions so far, guys? Okay. Then here you can say P one. P5, P51, whatever, and you say Python file here. And this is where you can give the file name. Now you see, okay, I can say here print 3 plus 5. Is this better? The font is a little bigger, right? Yeah. So print 3 plus 5, print quotation 3 plus 5. And first time you have to right click on it and say run the file name p50 whatever we have given and the output you will see at the bottom this is pycharm left side you have explorer right side you have editor and at the bottom you have the output okay so this is how you can install what is called as ide okay so Tell me any question so far. No, not here. Okay, not here. But you can do that in the notebooks. On Collab, you can do it. On um, uh, Jupyter, you can do it. But not in editors, okay, like PyCharm or VS Code. So, what you can do is if you want to uh, run only one line, you have to maybe comment this. I'll tell you what comment is in some time. Okay, any question guys? Guys are very silent on call. Ranjan, Suman, Supriya. Yes, sir. All good? Did you understand? Yeah, yeah. all good. Yes, sir, understood. Sir. Sorry, what was that? Understood, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Great. So yes, today sir. we have seen what Python is. So far, we have seen what Python is. We know how to program in Collab. We know how to install Python. And we know how to install PyCharm now. Correct? And um, um, and we'll stop here for today. Okay? What we can do is, because tomorrow what happens is, like, you know, we will come and we'll start coding from beginning. Okay? We'll do some program. Meanwhile, what I want you to do is I want you to install and see if you get any error. 